Hey guys, this is Maline from Maline Budgets. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be doing my rollover money on stuffing because I couldn't do it on uh, Sunday. I was still feeling under the weather. I still am, but hopefully this sinus infection and bronchitis will um, go away and we can move on with our lives. Okay, so first of all, thank you so much for everyone who entered my giveaway. It was open until uh, July 3rd at midnight, so 11.59 basically. And now I have to pick the winners, okay? And we have here a set of questions, uh, the Q&A style. I appreciate everyone who actually asked me something and not uh, just writing the hashtag to be entered into the giveaway. So first let's check our coins and I'll be answering um, the questions as we go. So let's see how much change I have. So we have 51, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 2, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 85, 95, 96. So 296. Let me plop it in here. So we said we have 296 minus 0 0.95. 0 0.94. 0 0.92. And 15. Let's get to 15. We can't. We'll just do the 14, okay? Okay. So first off, we have from Ange Budget and Debt. She says, what's your favorite place to travel? Um, I'll take this like out of all the places I've been to so far. My favorite has been uh, Vietnam. Uh, I spent there an entire month, the month of February of 2019, and it was such a blast. It was a culture shock, like experiencing their traditions and their food and their culture. They're, they're still a communist country, but they're way ahead of us in Romania, years, years away. So I just love the scenery, the fact that uh, they have both mountains for hiking and beautiful islands and beaches to uh, lounge on so yeah uh, that's one of my favorites but out of the European countries I would definitely say uh, Spain and Italy I would definitely move to southern Spain tomorrow to Andalusia and just live off of uh, tropical fruit in Malaga and uh, just avocados and all the awesome sangria that they have. Uh, I just love it there. The highway is also beautiful. It's along the coast. Same for Italy. In Italy, I love all the food, the architecture, the, the art, the historical, the historical impact. So yeah, those are my two favorites in Europe and Vietnam would be uh, outside of my continent, so in Southeastern Asia. Next up, still from Ange, we have, if you came to the States, yes please, what are the top five places you would visit? I will say New York City, LA, Seattle, New Orleans, because I love the culture, the French influence, the Mardi Gras, the beignet, and of course the jazz. And the last one would be, I don't even know how to like bring this all into one, but I would say the Grand Canyon and Horseshoe Bend and Antelope Canyon and 
actually experiencing the, I don't know, the Wild West feeling of those places. Um, and hopefully visiting one of the uh, Native American reservations and like being respectful to um, those tribes, especially the Navajo Nation, the Cheyenne, Apache, Comanche, Cherokee, wherever tourists are are still allowed to go and to experience their um, traditions and to learn more about their cultures and their beliefs. So yeah, I would definitely love doing that. Then we have Christy Williams from CW Does Life. She asks me, what made you decide to do the cash stuffing system? So, back in 2013, I used to have a 1,500 paycheck, I guess, with doing overtime, working from uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the schedule, but then overtime up until 9 or 11 p.m. So I didn't have much time to spend all the money, so we would just... Uh, get takeout at the office and maybe celebrate with a couple of beers and ever since then from 2013 to 2021 I've been living paycheck to paycheck It was like if I can afford to go on a holiday out of this paycheck, whatever. I'll buy it I'll buy the tickets the accommodation, whatever and I was actually in a very toxic relationship which I got out of and Yeah, basically all the money would go to him mostly partying and buying cigars and alcohol and whatever and then ultimately cheating on me so yeah but um i've started watching a ton of youtube channels uh the most famous ones um like i don't know the budget mom i'm not actually a follower of dave ramsey although i was in debt back then and you could only see um, me getting out of debt in November of 2022. So basically, I watched The Budget Mom. I watched um, Baddies and Budgets back when she was only Oh My Fro, Intentionally Living, a ton of channels. So this, this is what I started. We have this notebook, it says my head is a jungle, yes it was, I would, I would actually not have any rollover money if it was past my line because she would buy a ton of makeup, perfumes and clothes. But I'm happy I, I got rid of that nasty habit and only indulge myself every once in a while. So as you can see here we have October of 2021 where I started actually tracking my spending and we have tons of pages of this we also have my sinking funds um, and the spending categories actually here January of 2022 March April and then I switched over to Salisa's books. So we have the Easy Cash Budget Savings Challenge Planner. And uh, this one with the Savings Challenges, the Special Edition. And in this one, it was where I would track all my bills, my debt, uh, all the expenses. So, yeah. And also I could show you a couple of Savings Challenges that I finished. I especially love this honeycomb one from Salisa. The car one didn't have a lot back then. I finished the mosaic. A vacation tracker. Then we had the Christmas fully funded at 1500 The gifts one. And uh, getting one month ahead in September of 2022. And yes, you could see this on my channel as well. Because I started... September 15th of 2022, I started recording and that gave me the push uh, to keep myself accountable and to better track my spending and to decide do I really want to spend money on 
this frivolous thing or would I rather save it and enjoy this experience in another country or doing something fun, etc. Okay, let me get my envelopes here. So for groceries, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1, 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have 124 because as you remember last week I went to the dentist and I was uh, battling the cold. So I didn't spend much money. I only got myself a pack of a box of ibuprofen and um, some yogurt because I couldn't eat anything else. The pets, what do they have? 10, 20, 30, 40, 55. I only got them one pack of food. Coffee is empty. Uh, this one went to two taxi rides uh, to and from the dentist's office. And the spending money was um, for Toffee's bus tickets. So, yeah. So let's get through the letterbox and I'll answer more questions in the meantime. So we have here one nasty bee buck, as you can see. So Fiona from Frugality's Life, she lives uh, in Canada. She asked me, do you have Canada on your travel bucket list? If so, where in Canada? I actually do, Fiona, and I really, really want to visit British Columbia because I'm obsessed with how the surroundings um, of Vancouver look in the TV show called Virgin River. I know it's um, mostly filmed around uh, the Squamish River and it's just breathtaking scenery. I know in the show it's supposed to be a representative of uh, Northern California, like Humboldt County, with all the illegal um, growing, you know what I mean? But it's actually filmed in Canada and it's so breathtaking. And I would also obviously love to visit um, The Needle in Toronto. And I would also like to visit the Banff and the Jasper uh, National Parks. And of course, uh, the best view of Niagara Falls would be the one from uh, the Canadian side. So I'm sorry, my US budget besties. I would obviously cross the border to see you as well. But I would love to enjoy the, um, the Niagara Falls from the... Canadian border. Okay, then we have Green Rain 84 Cheryl. She asks, with if money doesn't matter, where is your dream vacation destination and why? Hmm. I think Japan would be the first option because I would definitely love to go visit it um, during the spring and to see with my own eyes um, the cherry blossoms in bloom um, to be able to celebrate the festivities of Ohanami visit the island of Nara uh, to see the, the deers uh, that are free over there and the cat island as well and I'm not a big manga fan or anime, but I do love Studio Ghibli. And I would visit the Harajuku um, quarter as well, obviously. And another one would be um, Alaska, because both myself and my boyfriend, we love the movie Into the Wild. And we also love uh, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. And the scenery there is just gorgeous how he longboards uh, down that um, specific glacier in Iceland that's that's fantastic 
and if we have the chance we would like to um, experience the the northern lights there as well either from there in Iceland or in Alaska but I would also love to see the Aurora Australis so the southern lights so a trip to New Zealand and Australia would be the one that that I would spend all my money on if money didn't matter Cheryl also asked, what is your must-see destination wish place in the USA? I think I answered that. It would be most definitely New York during the fall or in December to see all the, all the snow and the Rockefeller Center and uh, the huge Christmas tree and the ball dropping on New Year's Eve. So I think that would be it. Okay, let's see what kind of damage we can do here. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 45 first. 10, 20, 30, 40. 10, 20, 30, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4. And a 10. Okay, so 145, 340s and a 10. Okay, got it. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about budgeting? I don't know, my favorite thing is the fact that I can save money and see my accounts grow and have that peace of mind that I can pull out from those sinking funds if the need arises because that's what they're there for and I'm trying to educate myself in that regard but also the least favorite one would be having to pull from the sinking funds and not being able to watch them grow and also regarding the YouTube channel I despise it when I'm sick and my voice is like hell and I cannot talk to you guys and I miss you all so much and I also hate it when I cannot catch up with all of my friends all of my budgeting friends and I always try to support everyone and to leave a comment and I also watch during my work hours so there's only so few hours in a day that I can watch the videos like at full speed when I'm not helping with the uh, playlists that are just running in the background or in another tab and I can watch other videos in the meantime okay so we said 340s okay three so one two and three okay Cheryl is hitting me with another big one if you could see any band or musicians concert dead or alive who would it be and why Oh man, I hope you grabbed a coffee, a snack. You're in here for a long time. And I even made a list because there's so many. Okay, so. It would be Mozart at the Imperial Palace in Vienna. Then Buddy Holly and the Crickets, who inspired the Beatles, by the way. And I'm so sad that Buddy Holly died in that... Um, Airplane crash together with um, Richie Valens from Los Lobos. That's that's just a sad thing. Then Bo Diddley. He was brilliant. He inspired all of the next generations of rock and roll. So Elvis took his inspiration from his Afro beats. Okay. And the next one on the list would be definitely Elvis in Las Vegas. The Beatles, uh, during the Beatlemania, I would have loved seeing the Jimi Hendrix experience at Woodstock. Then, I don't know, David Bowie, but during his uh, Ziggy Stardust tour. 
of course queen at live aid that is my absolute must pearl jam at pink pop 92 alice in chains but with lane staley oh and fun fact um one of my neighbors and good friend from my childhood actually has a band and he's living in the uk and he opened for the current uh, alice in chains band so I was so thrilled for him, like it was seeing his greatest mentors and idols, so that was an, an amazing milestone for him. And I would have loved seeing Chris Cornell in no matter what band, like Audio Slave, Soundgarden, Temple of the Dog, even his acoustic shows, but sadly He's not here anymore and also the the last one would be Michael Jackson uh, when he went in concert in Romania back in 1992 I tried to do them a bit chronologically but that didn't end up well and hopefully hopefully we will be able to see Pearl Jam in their full formation before something happens and I know it's ironic because Eddie Vedder sings about like, whoa, I'm still alive, yeah, but since Taylor Hawkins is no longer with the Foo Fighters, um, that's, that's kind of like the only band that I've been liking since my teen years and they're still in the same grouping. So we said three forties and a ten. Is the ten this pink one? Mm, yes. Janelle Ray budgets. She asks, if you could go back in time and meet someone, who would it be? Well, let me see. Um, mm, I think in order to be amazed with their discoveries and all of the hard work they've been doing and their genius minds, I would pick Albert Einstein and Nikola Tesla, but also two authors that I would like to hang out with would be Edgar Allan Poe over a cup of brandy eggnog, his favorite and maybe savor some mojito together with Ernst Hemingway in Cuba. Yeah, that would be the dream. And also if I reread this sentence, if you could go back in time and meet someone, who would it be? If I can change events out of the course of history, mm, well, you know, I won't say it, but the mustache man. And also I would prevent Abraham Lincoln from going to the theater to see that play. And I would also love to meet my past self and like give myself some pieces of advice and prevent myself from doing some stupid stuff. And I would also love to have met my boyfriend earlier so, so we could have spent more years together, especially in our um, teen and 20s, I guess, because we only re-encountered each other now at 30, 31, so yeah. Okay, let me get the book out. So, Liz and Les, a hard question. What is your dream savings challenge? What does it look like? Oh my god, Liz. Um, well, it's not my dream savings challenge, but a fun one, like a game type challenge, would be... You know those bean boozled um, jelly beans, the one that you have like, I don't know, a white and like tiny specks on it color and it's both a roasted marshmallow and a stink bug, I would do that, like with a spinner wheel and you have to have a bag of those jelly beans next to you and whatever you spin on the wheel you need to, you would need to pick out that specific jelly bean and eat it and 
and you save less if it's the terrible taste you save more if it's the good one it would also work as a scratch and sniff actually yeah then we're moving on to the last questions May May from May May versus the Money Monster asks us if you could have one cassette from the ones on the tumbler, which one would it be? I have my prop ready here. And let me search. You cannot really see what's printed on these. Mm, <clears throat> Let's see. Is it this one? No. This one. This one is my favorite, obviously, because it's Bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet. And my favorite songs out of that one would be Living on a Prayer, first and foremost. Then we would have Raise Your Hands. And the last one, Wanted, Dead or Alive. So that one, together with Blaze of Glory, are the best songs because, as I said, they would be blasting through my trip in the Wild West, in Arizona, in, in Utah, when I would be um, going through all those canyons and the uh, natural reserves and the parks. So, yeah. And also, let's see. Where's that one? This one, Guns N' Roses, um, Appetite for Destruction. My favorites out of that one in order would be Welcome to the Jungle, Sweet Child of Mine, and Paradise City. And sadly enough, out of all the CDs that I have, the Bon Jovi Crossroads one, the best of, actually got broken, but I still love it. It got ruined during my move. I moved seven times in different rentals. And I also have two Guns N' Roses CDs, the greatest hits one, and the Chinese Democracy. I used to blast this one in the car with my mom. When we would go on our road trips on the car, we would also listen to rock set on repeat, especially Joyride. That's my top favorite. ACDC was my grandma's favorite band, so I still keep the CD. Um, I don't have the cassettes still. Uh, we used to have a ton of cassettes, especially with Metallica and Judas Priest and uh, P uh, Deep Purple and Scorpions, but now I don't have them, so I only have these ones. I still have Chris Cornell's solo album. I have a ton from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, Californication, By The Way, the greatest hits in Stadium Arcadium, which is beyond repair. And also the best of REM. I still love them so much to this day. They're part of my teenage years and have got me through a lot of stuff. Nita from the Almost Organized Owl asks, um, do you think you'll change careers? Honestly, I think about um, quitting my job every day, <laughs> both myself and my boyfriend, uh, we've come to that amount of burnout that's not really doing much for us anymore in terms of money or benefits from the company. I actually did change careers already because I don't know if you know, but, but I used to study letters, um, like applied modern languages, which would have uh, turned me into a translator or conference interpreter. I've studied French and Italian since I was in kindergarten, also participating in national competitions of translating and writing essays, etc. Um, English since middle school. Um, Spanish and Portuguese I actually learned on my own from um, soap operas, from telenovelas. And I took two years of Japanese in college because I couldn't afford the third one. There's no such thing as student loans here, but you do have to pay a tax at the beginning of the year if you did not have 
good enough grades coming out of high school to qualify for the better position in college. So yeah. So basically I would do translations and um, transcribing interviews, medical interviews, um, economic stuff back in high school, but I mostly used to do websites. So at first I started with WordPress and then I built my own stuff and did a bit of design and CSS and HTML, but my passion for video games um, made me go towards a video game testing route and then I moved to software testing, which is where I'm at today. So I'm a, so I'm a QA engineer, both manual and automated at a company and I like what I do, but I hate micromanagement. Uh, some people from upper management at my company have recently quit and that's a red flag and I don't know what the future will hold for us. But both myself and my boyfriend are dreaming about a house, an off-grid one. We always watch videos on YouTube of other people building their homesteads, earthships, tiny houses, camper vans, like installing solar panels, uh, all the generators, the water tanks, heating system, you name it. And my boyfriend is really good at DIY stuff, even around his apartment and out in the countryside at his parents. So maybe, maybe we can figure something out and this will be the house that Savings Challenges built, like Katie of the house said. So thank you so much, Nira. That was a great question. Victoria Guggen says, what's your top bucket list to do? And we already talked about that. And the last one would be, what is your favorite date that you and your boyfriend have been on? Okay, so this is from two years ago. My boyfriend and I went on a dinner date and then we went on a walk up on a hill um, in his neighborhood. And all of a sudden, like the sky turns dark there's like a storm and we're soaking wet and we have lightning hitting the uh, trees near us and then an electric cable came off a utility pole and then he asked me to be his girlfriend i really actually think he was afraid that we might die that night and by the way it will be our two-year anniversary this month uh, july 17th and i'm very excited about that but our most impressive feat that my boyfriend um, and I conquered was the fact that we hiked up on Mount Etna, the volcano in Italy, back in Sicily. So that was our first holiday together. We were just starting out and I literally booked a trip like two weeks from now. Like, no, we're doing this. We're going to Sicily. We'll see how things work out. If we can live with each other, if we can stand each other being somewhere remote and where only I can speak the language and can get by myself there. So, yeah. But it was awesome. And I was cursing the entire way up and tiny, tiny lunar pebbles would get into my shoe. I actually still have them. They're pretty cool and they tend to sparkle. The lava created this type of field and I love my memories from that trip and I do tend to collect um, seashells, sand, rocks from wherever I go. Okay, so enough chit-chatting. You're here for the giveaway, right? I will insert the clip now with all the winners.
congratulations to everyone. I'm so happy for you. So we have Amy, Nita, Anna, Sandra, and Kay. Yeah, this could be my mumble number five, but it's not. So I just wanted to put the whole clip in there so you can see it's not rigged. I only entered the hashtags once. I didn't have to remove any people who were not writing a nice comment or being subscribed to myself and uh, Rebecca over at Here to Their Journey or Liz and Les. So I hope you guys are happy with the result. I'm very happy with my winners. Please contact me uh, via Instagram or email so I can get your address so I can ship these out so we can have them and start saving uh, with the help of these challenges. Thank you so much for being here with me, guys. See, Loki is already nibbling on your packages. If you don't hurry to send me your address, um, you will not have any bags left. Okay, so thank you so much, guys, for being here with me, for putting up with me and my stupid voice. I hope to be better tomorrow and to have my hippie, trippy Wednesday. I have no idea what we're going to do. I love you all. I hope to see you in the next one. Happy 4th of July celebrations. Please keep your fur babies safe. I know they're scared of fireworks. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.